Uh, so, welcome to this place. Uh, we are glad to have you people uh, coming to visit with us so that uh, we may share in the word of God at this place. i uh, just like to welcome everyone. Uh, I'm the host, uh, Sammy Wilberforce. Uh, Gospel Sounders Ministry, working uh, together with uh, Brother Daniel Mesa of uh, Revelation with Daniel Ministry. And so this is uh, two ministries coming together so that uh, we may be able to learn uh, the Word of God. And uh, I'd like to welcome you so that uh, we may introduce ourselves and uh, start our first presentation this evening so that uh, we may see what the Lord will direct us. And so uh, I'll welcome you to introduce yourself. The one who is not here, the one who is hosting us is uh, Brother Frederick Ndebe. He's out uh, a little and uh, he'll be joining with us either later or uh, tomorrow in this presentation. So I welcome you. Maybe our brother who can introduce yourself. Yes, and uh, tell us about yourself briefly, where you go to church, where you fellowship, and uh, yeah, where you come from. Yes. Thank you, my brother Sami. Yes. I'm uh, Geoffrey Swan. Welcome, brother Geoffrey. I'm proud that you have welcomed us warmly in this, this place. Yes. So, my church is from Rio Jaro. I come from Nyacheki, that is uh, in the Kucha sub county. There is a uh, um, SDA church? My SDA church. Oh, okay, welcome. Uh, yes. A uh, brother? Yes. Um, Peter Andamo? Yes. From Okimbo Church in Salonesria. Oh, okay. Yeah. Welcome, Thank brother you. Peter. Thank you. Also, I'm very much happy, my brother Samuel, very much happy to be in this area of Rongo. Yes. Uh, my name is Pastor Peter Oeli Ugaro. I minister in a church called Yocharo. Yes. This is a Seventh-day church, or an SDA church. Okay. Yeah. So uh, at least uh, uh, we we know some of the teachings of uh, the Seventh Day Adventist Church, and uh, uh, these uh, five days uh, we shall be dealing uh, mostly with uh, the truth about God and uh, the sanctuary, and uh, it is important uh, we deal with such a topics because uh, they they are the ones that uh, show us the love of Christ and uh, the sacrifice of his son uh, for our salvation. Why, why should we look at um, the doctrine of God and uh, the sanctuary? I just want to say something before we pray and start. Uh, the, the main reason why we look at the doctrine of the sanctuary uh, is uh, found in the book of Psalms, the division of Psalms. I uh, just want to us to look at this and then we pray and then uh, we shall deal with uh, the topic uh, before us. Psalm 77 verse 13 uh, says that, uh, I hope you have it, Psalm 77 verse 13, the book of Psalm 77 13. Uh, We are told in Psalms 77:13. One of you can read it if you find it <coughs> aloud. You can read it. Okay. 77:13 says, "You are way, O oh God, is in the sanctuary." Who is so great God as your God? Yes, uh, that is 
what is uh, found in the book of uh, Psalms 77, verse 13. There is um, Psalms, and to be sure. 77 verse Yes, Psalm 77 13, we are told that thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary, who is so great a God as our God. And so, if uh, we would want to know more about God, where do we have to look? Where do we have to look in order to know about God? Come on, Pastor. Where do we have to look to know more about God? If we wanted to know more about God, where would we look? The Bible. We have to read more about the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, it is just in the text that we have read. Where, where particularly? From Psalm 7, 7, 13. Where particularly should we be able, which subject should we learn in order to know more about God? Sanctuary. The sanctuary. Yeah. Thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. So if we will know more about God, then it has to be in the sanctuary. That's why we will look mostly in the sanctuary and the God of the sanctuary. Yeah. Uh, so thy way, O God, is in the sanctuary. Yeah. So if we want to know the ways of God and who he is and how he operates, then we have to look in the sanctuary. And um, uh, Another important thing, we, we will be looking at the sanctuary and we will be looking about the truth about God and uh, why, why, why should we learn about God, uh, the book of, uh, that is the book of uh, John chapter 17, John 17. John 17 verse 3, I like somebody who has it to read it, so that uh, we know what it is. 17, John 17 verse 3. John chapter 17 verses 3. Am I to explain? It will be good to read in the of the audience. Oh, yeah. And this is eternal life. And this is eternal life. That they may know you. Yes. The only true God. Yes. And Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So this is eternal life. Eternal life is to know God. And Jesus Christ. That, that is why we are looking at the, the sanctuary because the ways of God is in the sanctuary. And then we are looking at the truth about God because this is eternal life. Mm -hmm. Eternal life is to know God and to know Jesus Christ. Yeah. And it's just not a knowledge that God is the Father and Jesus Christ is His Son. It, it goes more deeper than that. By knowing them, we have what we call... Um, uh, we, we have what we call uh, the rules of adaptation. What, what are the rules of adaptation? The rules of adaptation is that uh, the person you spend uh, most of your time with is the person you will reflect his or her image. So the more we spend time in the knowledge of the Father, that is God and His Son Jesus Christ, then our character is built as their character. In fact, this is um, when you look at uh, Second Corinthians. Then I pray, and then we go to the topic. Second Corinthians, chapter three. Then we pray. Second Corinthians, chapter three, and uh, it is verses. I like us to read it. Uh, I I like us to read from. Uh, verses 16 to verse 18, why we should know about God and uh, His Son. Uh, that is um, 
Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter three. Chapter three, verses eighteen. Verses um, 16, to 18. sixteen to eighteen. Yes, if you have it, this is sixteen to eighteen. Yes. Three sixteen says it says nevertheless. Yes. When one turns to the road, yes. The veil is taken away. The veil is taken away. Yeah. Verse 17. Now the Lord is, is the Spirit. Now the Lord is that Spirit. The Spirit. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, yes. there is liberty. Yes, verse 18. Verse 18. But we all, with the veiled face, beholding us in a mirror. Yes. The glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Yes, so this is the issue. Uh, we are told that uh, this is eternal life, that they may know thee, the only true God and Jesus Christ, whom thou have, thou have sent. And we are told that as we behold him, it's like we are beholding in the mirror and then we are changing from glory to glory. So as we behold God and his son, as we learn about him, we are changed into the self same image. So I'd like us to pray, bow down for a word of prayer, and then um, we shall be able to uh, enter into the session of today, the first session. Why is this important? We are going to look at... Um, uh, uh, the, in this session, we are going to look at uh, something which is so important, and uh, this is um, why is the truth about God important? Or uh, uh, is it salvation? Or is it something that is salvation? So uh, I'd like us to pray as we start. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for this evening and uh, thank you for thy grace and thank you for thy love, thank you for our brethren that uh, are in this place. We are praying that uh, your angels may minister unto us and Lord you may breathe upon our uh, souls, Lord you may breathe upon our lives that uh, we may be imbued with the Holy Spirit, the same Spirit that uh, guided the prophets to write these uh, writings and the Bible. It may help us to interpret it according to thy will. Help us not to speak of our own words, Lord, help us only to speak that which Jesus Christ shall give unto us. And so we praise thee and uh, we honor thy name because you have answered our prayers. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So, uh, there is always this uh, controversy, and uh, there is not a controversy, but um, there is always uh, a question. Why study this topic? Whichever topic that you may think of, be it health, be it dress, be it the truth about God, be it sanctuary, whichever doctrine you can name, be it the Sabbath and all the doctrines that we study as uh, our people and uh, Seventh-day Adventists, uh, the main focus should be why am I studying this doctrine? Is it important? Is it salvational? Is it, is it going to change my character? Is it going to affect my relationship with God? And uh, in which way is it going to affect me? Will it move me closer to God or will it move me further? In fact, every doctrine that should be, that is studied, it is not for people just to have a knowledge. No, no, that's not the essence of why we study doctrines. Knowledge is good, but knowledge puffs up. Knowledge doesn't profit anything if it doesn't affect our lives positively. So the main uh, thing that you should be concerned with when you're studying doctrine is, is it 
are imparting to me the fruit of the Spirit. And we know that the fruit of the Spirit is gentleness, humbleness, meekness, faithfulness, temperance, love, and all those things. Galatians 5.22. So whichever doctrine that um, you will set upon to study, it should be a doctrine that moves you closer to God. It should be a doctrine that um, will uh, make your life be of a positive impact upon the other people, not only in your life, but also your neighbor. Because we only have two commandments, love God with all your soul, your mind, uh, with all your mind and with all your soul. And uh, we have the second uh, commandment, which is love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so the doctrine that you study should affect the relation you have with your God, which is the first commandment, the first four commandments. And then it should be able to help you relate with your neighbor, which is the next six commandments in the Ten Commandments. So all doctrines should be centered upon having a relationship with God, which is a positive relationship, and having a positive relationship with your neighbor. And so uh, this is why we spend time in understanding God, in understanding the sanctuary, because it develops in us a character that uh, will help us uh, uh, be imbued with the Spirit of God, will help us relate with uh, uh, our neighbors in, in a better way. And so why is this thing, we, the topic of, to, of, of now, if you are writing down, is uh, why is the truth about God uh, salvation stroke important? Why is the truth about God salvation? Because we are only going to study things that will move us closer to God. And uh, we are going to see a few things which are important um, at this point. And so, uh, I'd like us to see something in the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. Because we are looking at it. Why is it important? Why is it salvation or the truth about God? Why is it important? And uh, I know you, you have heard so many teachings about God and His Son, but uh, these are unique messages that uh, God has given us in this end time so that we may understand the sacrifice that God has made for humanity. Uh, I'd like us to go to the book of John, chapter 3, verse 16. The book of John, uh, I like whoever has it in the English version, to read it so that uh, we may understand what the Lord is telling us. Yeah, it says, Yes. For God so loved the world that he gives his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So, we read in the beginning about the topics that we are going to study that this is eternal life that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom thou have sent. John 17, 3. Mm -hmm. And then in John chapter 3, verse 16, we are being told that for God so loved the world. And in this, the manifestation of the love of God is in giving his son. This is the manifestation of love. Love begets love, and God is love, and so he gave his only son, one. Yeah. If God could have taken from many sons, it is not a sacrifice. It is just as you will have a million shillings, and you take a hundred more and give somebody, that is not a sacrifice. And that's why when Christ goes into the temple and he sees people putting money in the basket, he sees a woman who gives a coin, which she only had. And he says that that woman has truly given her all. Because she's not giving from the abundance, from the many that she has. She's giving only what she has. And she doesn't know how she will survive tomorrow. And that is called a sacrifice. So God to manifest his love, he gives his only son. He didn't have many to choose from. He gives his only one son. And so that the son may die, and in that death, he offers eternal life. 
Christ accepts to be lost. I say to be lost forever. Because it is a risk he is taking. He could have seen when he was a person, a human being on earth. And he, he could have seen, then he could have lost heaven yeah. forever. Because the wages of sin is death. Eternal yeah. death. Yeah. So if Christ could have seen, he could have been lost forever. So Christ risks to be lost forever so that somebody may have eternal life. In fact, this is what he says in the book of Hebrews. Go to the book of Hebrews chapter 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Before we come back to John chapter 3, 16. Hebrews chapter 5. I'm giving you a verse. It should be from verse 16 down to verse 17. Uh, no, no, I'll give you the verse from verse 7 to verse 9. So, Hebrews chapter, chapter 5, verse 7 to 9. Hebrews chapter 5, 7 to 9. Yes, go ahead, brother, read it. Yes. Yeah. Who in the days of, the, of his flesh? Who in the days of his flesh? Yeah. When he had offered up players and sacrifices with strong sub. Supplication means will with ferment cries and tears to him who was able to save him from death and was saved because of his bodily fear. Yes, Christ in the days of his flesh as a human being, he offered prayers and supplication with strong crying from unto him that was able to save him from death. Yeah. Christ was crying unto his father who was able to save him from death, from falling to sin. And verse 8. eight. Although he was a son. Although he was a son. Yet he rendered obedience by the things which he suffered. Yes, so Christ learns obedience by the things he suffered. Yeah. Christ does not come as God and he does everything he wants. He has to learn obedience, although he was a son. And he is crying that he may be saved from sin and falling. Verse uh, 9. Nine. And having been perfected, he became the author of the eternal salvation. Yes, so Christ now is perfected and now becomes the author of eternal salvation. So, John chapter 3 verse 16, we find that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him must have everlasting life. That is the only son of God. He, he risks to be lost forever so that I may have eternal life. This is the love of God. And what does it teach us? That we should be lost of self for the salvation of others. Yeah. In fact, when uh, you go to the book of John, the book of John, the book of John, let me give you another verse here. That... Uh, Book of John chapter 15 verse 13. John 15 13. John chapter 15 verses 13. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great love has no one than this than to lay down one's life for his friends. Yes, greater love hath no man than this, that a man laid down his life for his friends. friends. That is the greatest love that can ever be given to man. Yeah. That a friend lays his life down for others. And yet, you know, in this verse we are being told that um, greater love has no man that he lay his life for his friend. For his friend. And uh, 
Let me this uh, verse here. In uh, now you go in, in John three in John fifteen thirteen says that greater love hath no man that he that than this that a man lay down his life for his friend. But now that is a very different love. If yeah. I love you, I can give my life. If I love you, I can give my life. I can give my life for my wife. But no, you are not friends to Jesus. Look at the book of uh, Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. Remember we are talking, why is this important? Knowing the truth about God and His Son. Romans chapter 5. <clears throat> And I'm giving you the verse, Romans 5, verses um, 6 to 8. Verses 6 to 8. It says, Yes. For when we were still without strength, when we were yet still without strength, strength yes. In due time, Christ died for the ungodly. Christ dies for what? The ungodly. Do people who are ungodly love Christ? No. No, no, people who are ungodly do not love Christ. Yeah. yeah. No way. But the other verse told us, told us that a friend laid down, uh, uh, someone laid down life for his friends. Yeah. He calls us friends when we are ungodly. Yeah. Verse 7. Yes. That For is verse, yes, verse 7. For scarcely, for scarcely, for scarcely, for a righteous man will one die. Yet, perhaps for a good man, someone could even dare to die. So we are being told that um, not it is not something normal for a man to die for a man, even Amen. though that man can be good. Yes. It is something which is scarce. You will find one uh, in a million cases, somebody has died for somebody. Yes. Even if they are friends and they are good. But now look at verse 8. What does it say? But God does what? But God demonstrates his own love toward us. God demonstrates. This yes. is an active this is an action. It is not something that uh, uh, actually it's a dead thing. It is something which is active. Demonstration. You show to the people. But God demonstrates his love towards us or commends his love towards us. In that? In that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So while we were yet still sinners, Christ died for us. This, this is now the love of God. That um, it says, these ungodly people, I'll send my son to die for them. Whether they accept him or whether they do not accept him, I'll give them my son. Yeah. And this is the thing. <clears throat> for you to understand the love of God and his son, Christ did not only take on human flesh. Christ was God essential because he was the son of God. My son will be human because I'm a human being. Christ is the son of God. He's God because he's the son of God. What comes from God is God. What he gets, God begets God. And so, Christ, before he became a human being, he was God. God, the body. His whole body was God. He had a divine body, like I, I will say like that. Look at Philippians chapter... Two. Philippians chapter 2 I want you to see the love of God why this is important before we go into many small details about uh, Christ the Father and the Son I want you to see how this is important and how it should affect our life and even make us to see ourselves dust because one who was God put everything down. So what about us who are dust? We should above ourselves and be able to give our life to God because we are nothing but dust. Philippians chapter 
2. And I'll give you the verse. Philippians chapter 2. Look at verse uh, 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 we, we, we are looking from verse 5 uh, to, verse, to verse 8. Uh, I'll go to Philippians. Five. Philippians. Mm -hmm. 2. Yeah, verses um, 5 to, to, eight. to 8. And this is what the Bible says. Let this mind be in you. So let this mind be in you. Let this spirit that was in Christ be in you. Let this mind that was in Christ also. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. Yeah. Read again. Let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So the mind that was in Christ has to be in us. The same mind, the same spirit, we shall see that, has to be in verse 6. <clears throat> Who, being in the form of God, did not consider his zero, consider it robbery to be equal with God. Who was in the form of God. God. He was not in the form of human being. He was in the form of God. Christ was begotten. John 3.16 For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. God begot his son. And he begot him in the form of God. And then he did not think that continuing to be God was something more which was so important. Why? Because Adam had fallen into sin. And so because Adam has fallen into sin, Christ was in the form of God. Now he has to do something. Verse 7. Verse 7. But made himself of no reputation, taking the form of bond, bond servant and coming in the likeness of men. Yes, so... He became a bond servant and came in the likeness of men. Verse 8. And being found in the appearance as a man. Yes. He humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of, a, of the cross. That is the sacrifice now. Yes. He sacrificed his godhood and took upon humanity. Which means that um, he sacrificed his body which was divine and now he has a human body and that is what Christ will remain with forever because of the sin problem he who was in the form of God has become in the form of man so that you and me may have eternal life this is eternal life that they may know thee the only true God and Jesus Christ whom thou hast sent the father and his son working for us in our salvation. And so, denying the Father and the Sonship of Jesus Christ is something which is so, uh, uh, I don't know what, how I can put it. It is something which is so uh, awful, I can say that. Something which is so bad. Because the moment you deny the Father and the Son, you have denied the sacrifice. You, you deny, essentially, the sacrifice that uh, has been made for us and so god so loved the world that he gave his only son and uh, the bible now and then declares jesus christ to be truly the son of god and uh, in matthew chapter 3 verses 17 in matthew chapter 3 verses 17 this is what we find Matthew chapter 3, verses 17. This is during the baptism of Jesus Christ. And when he came out of water, what are we told in Matthew chapter 3, verse 17? Uh, says, yes. And suddenly a voice came from heaven, saying, This is my beloved son. In whom I'm well pleased. So, who is talking these words that this is my beloved son? It is God who is saying, This is my beloved what? No, son. 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 
No human being is saying these words. It is God Himself who is saying, This is my beloved Son. And so, that, that is how important that this doctrine is. Because it is God Himself who, who declares this, not any human lips that is declaring that Christ is the Son. Also, during the at the Mount of Transfiguration, look at uh, Matthew chapter 17, verse 5. The book of Matthew, chapter 17, verse 15. Yes. Now, while he was still speaking, yes. behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and suddenly a voice came from, a voice came out of the cloud, saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased here in so this is the father again declaring that this is my son yeah. and uh, these words of the father are so important unto us that um, look at hebrews why, why are the words of the father so important the, the book of hebrews chapter 2 i'd like you to see something in the book of hebrews chapter 2 Uh, the book of Hebrews chapter 2 verses 1 to verses 4 uh, Hebrews Hebrews 2 verses 1 to verse 4 4 it says yes therefore we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard. We should give earnest heed to the things which we have heard. Yeah. Lest we drift away. Lest we drift away. Yeah. By not taking heed to the things we have heard, we will drift away. Yeah. And if you drift away, that means you are lost. Yeah. That's why God is cautioning us. Verse 2. For if the word spoken through angels brood steadfast and every transgression and disobedient deceived a just reward. Yeah, if the words of the angels were so powerful that if you heeded or unheeded unto them, there was a reward either for disobedient or obedient. These are the words of the angels. How about the word of the Father? Verse 3. How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation, which at the first began to, sp to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed to us by those who had it? Who had it? Had it. Yeah, so the word was spoken by the Lord and it was confirmed with the prophets and the apostles who had in verse 4. Um, God also <clears throat> bearing witness both with signs and wonders, with various miracles and the gifts of the Holy Spirit according to the, His own will. So, the angel spoke and the word was steady fast, but now we have God Himself bearing witness. Yeah. And we are being told, take heed to what God is saying, lest you drift away, lest you sleep from the Lord, and you be lost. And so, these words are so much important unto us that uh, we should take heed. And uh, why is the declaration that Christ is the Son of God so important? Why should the Father take so much emphasis in telling us that Christ is his Son? Why is it important? I want you to think about it. That um, God has immortal life. That is what the Father has. Eternal life. 
He has everything. But he said, tells us that this is my son. And uh, hear him what he says. There's a reason why he declares him a son. So this is the father and he has a son. You will expect that everything that is in the father is also in the son. And so he is the only channel. Because in John chapter 14, verse 6, he says that I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except, except by me. Yes. So, we have fallen short of the glory of God. We have sinned, and then what we are seeking is eternal life. But the Father is saying, eternal life you cannot get from me. You have to get it from my son. This is my son. What I have, I have given him so that he may give unto you. And that's why it is so important to understand this doctrine. Titus chapter 1 verses 2. We, we, we are looking for this eternal life which has been promised to us. I hope you are getting these points clear. And why this is so important in our lives. Because we have been promised eternal life. In Titus chapter 1, verse 2, what does it say? <clears throat> 1, verse 2. Yes. In hope of eternal life which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. So God has promised eternal life before Christ began. Now look at Colossians 1.27. How, 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 how is this life in us? Colossians 1.27 Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 Yes 1, 2, 27 Yeah man Yes. Read it. <coughs> yes. To them God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory, glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. Mystery. Yes. mystery among the, the Gentiles, Gentiles, which is which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So it is only Christ in us, the hope of glory. God has promised eternal life, but that eternal life, it is Christ in us, the hope of glory. Because he has given his son to have this life. Go to 1 John 2.22. 1 John 2.22. Two, Yes. Who is a liar? Who is a liar? But he who denies that Jesus is the Christ, he is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Verse 23. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He so, who yes. Acknowledges the Son as the Father also. So whoever accepts that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he has yes. the Father. Yes. Yeah. Who but whoever the word denies, yes. yes. He, he doesn't he have the Father. The father. The father also. That is the He's thing. A liar. He is a liar. In fact, uh, we, we shall see whose witness that uh, is so important in these things. We are talking about the Father and the Son, and uh, as we come to a close, uh, about these things, why this is uh, so important. Uh, we want to see something because there are many people who deny the doctrine of the Father and the Son and uh, they say just Jesus Christ was um, a metaphorical, a role play son of God. But this is not what um, uh, the Bible talks about when we speak about Jesus Christ. In fact, this uh, 
we, we have strong sentiments here as we come to a close and end. I, I hope now you are seeing um, why this is so important, knowing the Father and the Son and acknowledging that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Uh, I want you to, we look at the last verses as we close this session, why is it so important to accept that Christ is the real Son of God? Because many people say that he is not a real son. Many people say that he is just another God of his own. And uh, he came together with God and they are one God. But um, there's a lot of confusion that uh, is outside there. And we have to read the Bible for ourselves and we have to understand what he says. And so in closing, I'd, I'd like you to see First John chapter 5. Why is this so important? Why is this so salvation? We have seen that um, it is the witness of God that the eternal life was promised to us from the beginning, the book of Titus. And that life in Colossians 1.27 is Christ in us, the hope of God. Yeah. Why is these things important as we close? First John chapter 5, and we are going to read from verse, um, verse 9. To we'll start from verse 9. I'll see where we can read. Yeah. The book of um, 1 John chapter 5. And uh, start from verse 9. Yeah, it says, Yes. If we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God which he has testified of, of his son. So the thing is, if we receive the witness of man, the witness of God is greater. Yeah. So between man and God, who is great? So, it is God who is great. Yeah. So if you had two witnesses standing, one God on your right and man on your left, and you are faced with a, with a choice to take the witness. We are being told, whom shall you choose? This God. It is God because God. God's witness is great. great. Yeah. Because he doesn't lie. Yeah. Yeah. God doesn't lie. In him there is no darkness. Yeah. We read that in the book of First John chapter 1. Yeah. Uh, in him it's only light and no darkness. Yeah. And we, if we say there is no sin in us, we make God a liar. Yeah. So the witness of God is great. And what is the witness of God in that same, same verse? That's Jesus. He has testified of his word. Son. His son. That is the greatest witness that we can ever have. Yeah. Verse, um, verse, verse, the next 10. verse, verse 10. Verse 10. He who believes in the son yes. of God has the witness in, in, in himself. himself. Yes. Yeah. He who does not believe God has met as many Mariah. So if we say that Christ is not the Son, the real Son of God, mm -hmm. then what we have done, we have made God a lie. Yeah. And you know, it says that whoever breaks one commandment has broken all commandments, the book of James chapter 5. So uh, the book of James chapter 2, I think. Whoever breaks one commandment has broken all the commandments. Yeah. Yeah. And one of the commandments is commandment number nine, thou shalt not bear false witness. That means thou shalt not lie. Yeah. So if you lie, <clears throat> there is no heaven. And so if you don't believe that Christ is the son of God, and he's just a role play in the plan of salvation, then you have made God a liar. We have only one true God, the Father, and his son, Jesus Christ. And that son is whom he gave us because of his love for us. And so, he that believeth on the son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God has made him what? A liar. A liar. And what is the record? Complete the set statement. Because? Because he believes not the record that God gave of his son. Because he doesn't believe in John. In fact, 1 John 5.10 is a quotation lifted from John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And he believes in him must have eternal life. Yeah. And here he's saying, because he believed not the record that God gave. Yeah. For God so loved the world that he gave. Yes. So, 1 John 5.10 is repeating 
John 3.16, yes. that God gave his son. Yeah. If you don't believe that, you make him a liar. If you believe in some other conception or you believe in some other doctrine or you believe in some uh, uh, other construction that uh, there is another God apart from the Father who actually is just role-playing as a son, you make God a liar. Because the witness of God that he gave is son. And God cannot lie. Verse um, 11. And this is the record. And this is the testimony that God has given us eternal life. And this life is in his son. So if you reject Christ to be the son of God, what are you rejecting? You reject the right word. You are rejecting eternal life. Yes. Because, and this is the record that God has given to us, eternal life. And this life is in his son. So, if you believe in another concept which is different from what God has given unto us, then it means that you don't have eternal life. Yeah. And no one can live forever without eternal life. Yeah. What we need in our life is eternal life to live forever. Yeah. If you deny this, then you don't have eternal life. Verses 12. He who has the Son has life. Yeah. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Yeah. Yes, he who does not have the Son of God does not have no life. He, he doesn't have life. Verses 13. Those things I have written to you yes. who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So what name should you believe on? The name of the Son of God. This name of the Son of God. Not God the Son. No, no, no. We are being told that believe in the name of the Son of God. Not God the Son. It is something different. If you flip it around, then you have changed everything. You have rejected eternal life. Yeah. That, that, that is essentially what we are being taught. Believe in the name the Son, the Son of God. God. It doesn't tell us believe in the name God the Son. We should be so careful when we are reading our Bible. Yes. Because it is because of these little things that we are disconnected from God. If thought just by eating of the fruit, this little thing, God cannot deny me eternal life, but that was the fall of man, not the rise of man. And so, these things have I written unto you that you believe on the name of the Son of God, not on the name God the Son. So, anyone who will come with another concept that changes the Bible to read the way it doesn't read, it means that you are making God a liar and you are not having right the lie eternal. And, uh, Verses uh, 20 and 21. Same, same, same chapter. Same chapter. 20 and 21. And it says, Yes. And we know that the Son of God has come and has given us an understanding that we may know him who is true, and we are in him who is true, in his Son, Jesus Christ. This is the true God and the eternal life. So, we have the true God and we have the eternal, eternal life. Yeah. The Father and his Son. His son. And he cautions us with the last verse. There. We have been given eternal life through the Son. God has borne a record and a witness. And the record is that he gave his Son. And when ending, he tells us this. Verse 21. Yes. Little children, keep yourselves from your idols. Amen. Yes. And so, don't... <laughs> Believe in anything. No, no, no. Believe in the witness of the Father that he has given unto you. We are being told that um, 
Believe in the witness yeah. of God and the witness and the record that he gave his son. Yeah. And in doing this, you will have eternal life. Yeah. And then you will keep yourself from idols yeah. By believing in the Father and believing in the Son, yeah. it will guard you from idolatry. Yeah. What is idol idolatry? Worshipping of foreign yeah. gods. Yeah. That is the thing. Worshipping of foreign gods. Yeah. Worshipping and believing in the things that actually has not been written. And uh, I, I'll finish with this verse, the book of Jeremiah. I won't be able to expound on this. Our time is gone. I just wanted to make this one hour session because I don't want us to have indigestion and in, uh, looking at many things. I just wanted to set a foundation for this. The book of uh, Jeremiah, chapter 2. Chapter 2. Jeremiah chapter 2. I want you to look at this closely. <coughs> the book of Jeremiah chapter 2. Because this is important. We are, we are looking at the subject. Why is this important? Is it salvation? Yes. This is most important unto us. And uh, I want you to realize here. The book of uh, Jeremiah chapter 2. And uh, chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. Jeremiah. Jeremiah, chapter 2, verses 11 to 13. This is where we are closing now. Yes. As a nation changed in this course. Hath a nation changed? You were told, avoid idols. Yes. That is it, is it? Yeah. And then we are asking, has a nation ever changed? It's gods. It's gods. Yeah. Yes. Which are not gods. Which are not gods. Yeah. But my people have changed their glory for what does not profit. Now, I want us to reason together. When you change the God, what do you change? Look at the verse. I want you to look at the verse once again. When you change God, what do you change? The glory. The glory. The glory of God. The glory of God. Yeah. And the glory of God is his character. So if you change God in your life, what you are changing is the character in your life. And it's only the character of God that makes you fit for heaven. Now, if you change God, you change glory, then you will have not have the, you will not have the character of God, then you will not be fit for heaven. Yeah. So has a nation ever changed their God, which are not yet gods, but my people have changed their glory for that which does not profit. So the glory of the character you have will not profit you at the end of the day. Verses of verse 12 to be as tonish. Or oh, even astonished, yeah. Or oh, even that at this unbelief, what of be afraid, be very destroyed, says the Lord. So he's saying that be astonished, all oh, heavens at this, and be horribly afraid, be very desolate, says the Lord. There is nothing that is left amongst you because you have changed the gods, and that is changing the glory. The last verse. For my people have committed two evils. My people yes. have committed two evils. Mm -hmm. They have forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and heal them. Themselves, seats and broken, seats and that can hold no water. So, systems. Systems. Yeah. For my people have committed two evils, they have yeah. forsaken me, the fountain of living waters, and healed them out, cisterns, broken cisterns that can hold no, okay, no water. No water. Yeah. What do you understand by the living waters? What is the living waters? This is the everlasting water. This is the everlasting water. Another thing, yes, it is the everlasting water. Living waters are everlasting waters. What else can you say about the living waters. Life. Water. water is life. Yeah. And life is in his son. Yeah. So what they are doing, 
they are drinking from another God which doesn't have life in himself. And so they don't have everlasting life. They don't have living water, they don't have life. They are dead while they are still living. And this is because they have changed gods. They have been warned, avoid idols. They have come in with idols. And in turn, it is broken system. And we are told that life is in his son. So if you change the gods, you reject the father, you reject the son. And whoever doesn't have the son doesn't have the father. And whoever doesn't have the son doesn't have the time of life. And so this is how important this doctrine is. This is how important we are talking about the issues that has to do with God. And so I pray that um, as we shall be going through these sessions, that um, you will understand how important is this issue of knowing God, the Father, the only true God, and His Son. Because in it, we are told that it is eternal life. This is eternal life that they may know the, the only true God and His Son. And this is why it is important, because it has to do with the eternal life, it has to do with the, uh, the, the witness of the Father. And if the witness of men is greater, the, is something to go about, then the witness of the Father is so great than the witness of men. Uh, I pray that the Lord may bless us, and uh, these uh, few days that we are going to be together, the Lord will bless us. I don't know if we have a question, then uh, we may pray. Uh, to me, I may just have a comment from uh, this book of uh, First John, chapter 5, verse uh, 21. Yes, as so you say that about uh, little children, yeah. keep yourself from idols. And uh, many other people have done this past, where they are saying that it is only the little children. Remember, a little, a little children or a little child is a young person. Mm. So they have said these fans or those who are who have been uh, told to avoid from idols are the young, but the elder, elderly and the old people are not in the to follow this one. And so in the in the eyes of God, we are children. Yeah. yeah. In fact, this is confirmed in the, the book of Hebrews chapter two. Uh, we are the children of God. Yeah. And, uh, verses 13. Hebrews 2.13. Hebrews 2.13. All of us are children. Hebrews 2.13. Hebrews 2.13. Yeah. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here I am. And the children whom God has given me. Yes, so we are the children of God. So you cannot say that um, uh, 1 John 5 and 1 is speaking about these young ones and all. No, we are... In the eyes of God, we are his children. Yeah. And so the verse applies to the young and the old. And thank you, my brother, for that. I don't know if there is anything else as we close. So we praise the Lord for everything. Yeah. Uh, I pray that uh, we will continue learning uh, together. And uh, God uh, will... Uh, embrace these things on our minds so that uh, we may avoid adultery and uh, we may avoid uh, uh, adding or uh, subtracting from the word of the Lord. Let us pray, close in prayers. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this session, how these things are so important that uh, we may have eternal life which is through thy Son. We have been told to believe in the name of the Son of God, not in anything else. And so we pray that uh, our lives may conform to thy will, to thy word, and uh, we may not add or remove anything in thy word. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.